Thank you, Katie. And welcome, everybody, to the ninth Sunday after Pentecost here at Christ Lutheran Church as we worship together on Zoom. I want to invite everybody to especially stay for coffee hour tonight. We've got some important announcements for the congregation, uh, some things that we are uh, moving around a little bit. And so we want to make sure everybody gets informed on that, uh, those changes. So uh, please uh, stay for coffee hour after our worship. We'll begin now with the call to worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The call to worship. God calls his world to compassion and wisdom. He satisfies the desire of every living thing. Why do we spend money for that which is not bread, and our labor for that which does not satisfy? Come, let us witness God's love and word and deed. Let us serve Christ by serving all who are in need. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. Christ became last of all and servant of all, so that we might know God's love, forgiveness, and restoration. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference. We do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought word and deed, by things we do and things we leave undone. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the free but costly grace of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in true hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now join together in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. And waken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now have special music with Katie.
word. The first reading today is from Isaiah 55, 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come and buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for God, David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Today's psalm is from 145, 8 through 9, and 14 through 21. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways 
and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second uh, reading today is from Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you. Back in the old days, before they had America Has Talent and all those other TV shows, they had the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. And for our, our children's sermon, so to speak, on this morning, we are going to uh, share a little bit of a camp song that uh, I learned back in 1970. Isaiah 55 is the only Bible verse I know of that starts with the word, ho! And somebody had the bright idea of making it into a, a sea chanty. And so, for your listening and faith uh, enjoyment, here we go. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Ye that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Why for do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hallelujah! Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Why for do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hallelujah! Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Ye that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Listen carefully to me and eat that which is good and delight yourself in fatness, fatness, fatness. Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye by and eat. That's a fun one. Our gospel for today comes from 14th chapter of Matthew. Now, when Jesus had heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, 
and they took what was left of, over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, as we fly through the Gospel of Matthew this summer, we make a course correction today. We go from Jesus as the teacher to Jesus as the miracle worker. That's not a minor course change. It's a bit of a game changer. Maybe you can imagine those disciples looking at Jesus, knowing him as a teacher, he would be a respected reformer of the Torah, someone who taught with authority and not as one of the scribes. Jesus knew it backwards and forwards, and he turned the tradition back to what God intended. Teaching and learning are expected for faithful people. We listen to great teachers, we learn, and from new insights, we get new ways of living. Faith grows. But a miracle worker. Think about that for a second. Jesus is now a disruptor of the natural and expected ways of nature. A powerful individual who could overturn disease and illness, and this morning, change rumbling stomachs and thirsty tongues. Now, with a teacher, you can debate points of theological interpretation, but what do you do with a miracle worker? Either you look at it and be amazed, or you doubt it and you wonder. The Gospels record that both reactions were among Jesus' inner group of disciples. But Matthew makes it clear that this is no pen and teller fool us sort of moment. No magic's involved. There are actual wicker baskets full of food left over from these very meager beginnings. Scraps. No, not scraps. Leftovers. The hungry are full and happy. This miracle is nothing short of the acting out of the parable of the mustard seed. From the tiniest sort of seed, a great bush can grow. From the smallest bit of food, Jesus fed thousands. Now there's a point here. Miracles in the Bible aren't there for their own sake. They're pointers to Jesus. They point to his anointing as the Son of God, the Messiah. They're symbols of God's power over the world. They aren't there for show or spectacle. They have a serious function to show us God's power and authority in time and space, how different God's ways are from the world's ways. Now, there's a human temptation to claim power for ourselves. Immediately, you might think of faith healers on TV, whose presence always raises the question that if what they are doing is actually true, then why aren't they hanging around intensive care units in this time of great death? I know fake gospel when I see it, a cheap imitation of a magic show. Our magic, or our modern version of John, or Martin Luther's John Tetzel, who sells indulgences across the river. But let's go to another twist in the gospel this morning. And this morning depends on something we didn't read this morning. Turn the page back a few verses, and suddenly you're at the infamous birthday party for King Herod. The contrast here is between two meals, and it couldn't be starker. John the baptizer had provoked Herod by naming his relationship with Herodias adultery. Herod wants to kill him. But the polls are saying that John has a popular following. His popularity rating among religious people is at a whole time high. The story goes that Herod gets drunk at his birthday party. Herodias' daughter dances for him, sweeps him off his feet, which, given his state of mind, didn't take much. He promises with an oath to give her anything she wants. Coached by her mother, she asks for John the baptizer's head on a platter, served up like another dish at the meal. That sobers Herod up quickly, but like any good politician, he doesn't want to offend his base, so he kills John the Baptist. 
John's disciples claim the body, give it a proper burial, tell Jesus, and that's where we jump right into the story of the feeding of all these people. So on the one hand, we have a wild, drunken party of the rich and famous. All the food that wealth can provide, all the rowdy feasting and partying that goes on like there's no tomorrow and no one there to hold Herod accountable for anything. And then the story shifts like a needle skipping across a record album to the scene of Jesus trying to find some personal time to reflect on John's death. But the crowds find him and pretty soon they're asking for mercy. And Jesus is filled with pity and compassion. Do you hear the contrast? One leader has no compassion, no conscience, no inner voice telling him what's acceptable and what isn't. But Jesus, on the other hand, listens to the voice of God's mercy. He has pity on the villagers, compassion, a conscience that says if he has the power to heal, he will do it. No hesitation at all. The disciples want him to tell the crowds to go back to the villages for some takeout. And his compassion then goes one step further. No situation for him seems desperate, no crisis unmanageable. He's nothing but calm and deliberate compared to Herod's raucous party. He tells the disciples to fix the problem of being away from the home kitchens for supper. They come back with a quick excuse. They've only got five loaves of bread and two fish are on the menu. Not at all like Herod's lavish menu at his party. This is the only miracle that's mentioned in all four of the Gospels. And from that, we can pretty much guess it had a great impact on the early faith. Jesus takes the food, he blesses it. This is carefully set like the Lord's Supper, a Holy Communion moment, taking up the loaves, breaking the loaves, blessings, giving it to the disciples. As the crowd reclines on the lake shore in the afternoon sun, they are fed. The baskets have food left over by the time they are all stuffed and they can't eat another bite. How nice to have women and children included in the story, but not in the actual count. <laughs> hey, Matthew, male privilege. The people here are living on the ragged edge of poverty. We have to realize that. And to be filled is nothing but a gracious gift. Jesus' abundance is amazing. It's a miracle feast on the shoreline. But we know this much about Jesus. He is the mercy of Almighty God on earth. He is the compassionate Son of Man, the down-to-earth incarnate Savior. That's what the miracle points to. Five loaves and two fish are nothing but a solution that needs to be put into action. No problem. Amen. We now sing hymn 479. <laughs> Oh.
pray together our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we, may we give with gladness and sincerity. Bless the offerings we send to your mission on this day and give us all that we need for daily living and abundance and compassion. We thank you for your grace through Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now join together in prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers, offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Help us to wisely reverse the damage we have caused your creation with dams, clear-cutting, and pollution. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect our forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We are especially mindful of those who struggle emotionally in this time of stress. Bring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation at Christ Lutheran such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant open hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known in our lifetimes who brought us to faith and showed us the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now receive the prayers of our fellowship in silence, through chat, and in word. We pray for those who cannot join us via Zoom. May we keep to remember them in our prayers and our thoughts and our concern. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Roy.
for Grandma, Donna, and Jim? For those in the path of the storm. Hello, Tammy and everyone. Thank you. 